Greenlight Capital's David Einhorn knocking Tesla today in a letter to investors, comparing it to the now bankrupt Lehman Brothers and saying the quote, deception is about to catch up to them. He writes, Lehman threatened short sellers, refused to raise capital, it even bought back stock, and management publicly suggested it would go private. Months later, shareholders, creditors, employees and the global economy paid a big price when management's reckless behaviour led to bankruptcy. Is David Einhorn right? Joining us to discuss uh, is Gabe Hoffman from Accipita Capital Management, who's currently short Tesla, and Ross Gerber from Gerber Karasaki, who, who is a Tesla shareholder. Gentlemen, uh, great to have you uh, both with us. Gabe, let me start with you. I, I guess uh, you agree with uh, this take from David Einhorn. Absolutely. I've been saying for some time that I believe Tesla is currently on the verge of a financial crisis and will go bankrupt. Specifically, let's look at what Tesla's suppliers are saying because they know more in the real world than even we do. And specifically, I'm talking about the credit default swap market. It's showing an 18% chance that Tesla goes bankrupt in two years. Compare that to 1% of Ford and General Motors. Tesla's suppliers are owed $3 billion in accounts payable as of June 30th. That's been ballooning. And compare that to only $1.3 billion of actual Tesla cash, not customer deposits, which is a worse quick or current financial ratio than General Motors was just before it declared bankruptcy. Ross, I can imagine that you probably feel differently. I know that you are long Tesla shares. Why do you think Tesla is very, very different from Lehman Brothers? Well, first of all, David Einhorn has the most absurdly poor results of any manager of money over the last five years that exists today. His fund has been decimated. He's actually a lot more like Lehman Brothers than anybody else. So I feel bad for him and his shareholders down 25% this year. We started a fund at our firm called the Opposite Einhorn Fund, where we just do exactly opposite <laughs> of what he does. And it's worked amazingly. So that fund's up 25% on yeah. the year. Um, but that being said, if J.C. Penney and Sears are somehow still not bankrupt, I, my least concern is Tesla when their revenue is about to double uh, to six billion for the quarter, and they're about to be cash flow positive. I think the business models are pretty different. Those are very different business models. JC it's Penny, not about Sears business model. The, the fact that these companies have been struggling for so long and managed to still find capital and stay in business is a miracle. So a, a vibrant, fast-growing growth story that has one of the most amazing products ever created um, in doubling revenue. Ross, I mean, how many companies are like that? Ross, you're absolutely right to point out Einhorn's performance, uh, as you said, down 26% year to date. That's down just 9%. this year. Look at the just last in, five just, years. It's, it's, it's even worse. Quarter. The Tesla but, but, short was but, the second biggest winner during the quarter. But, Ross, uh, let, let's dive into the other issues as well. I mean, what do you make of the developments this week? Uh, initially, it seemed like Elon Musk had got a a relative pass from the whole issue with the SEC, and he's doubling down, fighting back in a way that seems very short-sighted and, and arrogant in the last 24 hours. I, I think that's an accurate statement. Uh, Elon is having the uh, Steve Jobs reality disconnect problem right now, where he thinks that he's big tough guy against the SEC, and, and certainly I think the SEC case, you know, has its flaws, but the game is not insult the regulators. That's, that's a really bad game, you know, in general. So I, I'm not very happy with his tweets. I've made that known to the company uh, and to him directly uh, in a tweet yesterday that made news. And, you know, I, I can't explain it. I, I think there's just a little bit of this sort of like things are so, going so well at Tesla now F you kind of thing. And, and, I, I, and I just think it's a bad attitude and a mistake. Gabe, are you most concerned or is, is your position short Tesla the strongest because of what's going on with the capital and the fact that Tesla does need to raise some more money? Tesla needs at least $5 billion, in my view, right now just to have any chance of surviving. The reality is that Wall Street banks have paid tens of billions in penalties over the last decade or so for underwriting shoddy securities. And there is no way that they will raise money for a company which still has an SEC investigation separate from Elon Musk's 420 tweet into their financial projections, as well as a DOJ investigation and other things. And I would remind you that the simplest explanation for Elon Musk's behavior is the most likely to be correct. That is that things are much worse at the company than the stock price indicates. And we also know that Elon does have some 
documented self-medication issues that were, uh, you know, <laughs> discussed in Jim Stewart's New York Times article, and I'm not talking about marijuana. Well, first that, of all, that we don't taking really need Ambien, to dive into. It, you know, let's be real, Gabe. You know, we have sources inside the company, and the company has never been doing better. Everybody's really pumped at the company right now. They've achieved an incredible success. They made more EV cars in the quarter than any company in history has ever made in a year. And, it, you know, really, Elon is, 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 it's not a huge demoralizer for the company, but it is starting to affect people at the company because things are going so well. And, and that's really the disconnect that is bothering us. So we think the risk in the stock has gone up because of Elon's behavior, and, and we've taken note of it. But we had a, a long talk about it this morning, and we're not changing our position in Tesla. Ross, I just want to ask you what your price target is, because uh, in the Einhorn letter, he critiques Catherine Wood of ARK Investments' uh, belief that this can go to $4,000 per share. Well, what's, what's realistic for you? Well, we look at it from, the, you know, real numbers, and our numbers are they do 24 to $25 billion over the next 12 months, and we assign, let's say, a four times revenue a multiple to it. So we see it being worth about $100 billion in the next 12 months if they execute as they look like they are. And that would put it at around $571 a share. But of course, you know, it's so much is predicated on the perception of Tesla too. And, and that's where Elon really needs to get his ducks in a row and start, you know, playing the game a little bit better. Gabe, I guess your price target is zero. <laughs> <laughs> that's absolutely correct. And I would remind uh, people that all it would take is a couple of Tesla's many hundreds of suppliers, just a couple, to decide that they would like to get paid cash on delivery. And you could have Tesla's sh lines shut immediately and the company go into a very quick bankruptcy. Something Gabe, similar Panasonic. happened to Toys R Us. Okay, Panasonic. We'll leave it is, there. <laughs> they're rushing Gabe, to get the Ross. things there.